Hello everyone. In this episode, I will be explaining Gartner's Hype Cycle tool and how it can be used to help technology executives and business owners make technology adoption decisions within an organization. Before I get started, please ensure to subscribe to this channel where I cover topics on digitalization, digital business, and new technologies within organizations. So let's get started. As a technology executive, you're constantly expected to evaluate new technologies and trends to keep your business gain a competitive edge in your industry. But with so many new technologies servicing daily and at different levels of maturity, how should one go about in making those decisions? How can a technology executive ensure that adopting a certain technology won't be risky, but rather will be beneficial for the organization and will provide a positive ROI in the long run? Let's take some recent trends in the marketplace. A lot of enterprises these days are testing the waters to potentially adopt emerging technologies such as machine learning, blockchain, smart robots, cognitive computing, and others. How can one get a perspective on the maturity of these technologies within organizations in general and their future potential? To help with these decisions, Gartner introduced a tool a few years ago called the Hype Cycle. It is widely used in many organizations to drive their technology strategy and investment decisions. The hype cycle, as we can see here, is a graphical representation of how various technologies progress from conception to eventually becoming mainstream. The position of each technology on this graph indicates the maturity level of various technology innovations, such as blockchain and machine learning, for example, and shows the current performance trends in the market at any given point of time depending on their overall performance, the state of their ongoing trials and experimentation, their adoption in the marketplace among other users, and other such data that can help others make their own decisions. Each year Gartner releases more than 90 plus hype cycles related to various technology domains. Some of the recently released hype cycles relate to domains such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, data management, digital marketing, internet of things, blockchain, and others. For a given technology domain, the hype cycle also shows multiple technologies or items, providing a good overview of the overall domain. In many cases, this may expose managers to other technology innovations that may even be more relevant to them and that they had not known earlier. For example, in the figure that we see, Gartner's hype cycle for digital marketing and advertising shows 30 plus technologies. The hype cycle example diagram that we see here is normally included as part of a much detailed report which Gartner issues to its client members only and is not available in the public domain. We'll cover the contents that are included in that report a little later in the presentation. For now, let's review the hype cycle graph in more detail. As we can see, the hype cycle is a graphical representation that shows a new technology's progression through five distinct phases that start at the innovation trigger and eventually reaches the final phase of the plateau of productivity, where it is considered mature and mainstream. The other three middle phases are, are peak of inflated expectations, trough of disillusionment, and slope of enlightenment. The duration that a technology may take to progress from one phase to another varies by technology and, and its adoption by the market. Also, not all technologies may go through all five phases and may die in the middle before they reach full maturity. On the other hand, some technologies may go through all five phases quickly, indicating their maturity and their adoption in a small period of time. Let's review these five phases in more detail. The innovation trigger is the first phase when a technology breakthrough creates early excitement in the market and starts to become popular. In this phase, the adoption amongst a select few early adopter organizations picks up pace. However, the products related to the technologies that are in this phase are still not mature and are not widespread. So organizations that decide to adopt or experiment with technologies that are in this phase can be considered early adopters and risk takers. The technology in its maturity life cycle then reaches the second phase on the hype cycle known as the peak of inflated expectations. The fact that a technology is in this phase means that the market's expectations for the technology have peaked and the market has slowly started to lose interest in the specific technology. This happens perhaps due to the technology not living up to the hype or for other reasons. 
As Gartner states, the only organizations making money in this phase are conference organizers and magazine publishers who are simply discussing the topic. From here, due to lack of meaningful results and accompanying negative coverage, the interest and adoption in the technology slow considerably, and the technology slides down and here's the third phase known as the trough of disillusionment. So the fact that the technology is in this phase means that the market in general has lost interest and there are only a few select ongoing trials and experimentations. For the technology to be in the trough of disillusionment doesn't indicate that the technology may necessarily overcome the barriers and progress to the next phase, or which is the fourth phase. Nor does it mean it will die in that phase. It's possible that a technology may become successful without hitting the trough of disillusionment, even though some argue that technologies rarely mature before going through a disillusionment phase. Although one would think that most technologies would die in the trough, an interesting thing happens, and the interest in certain technologies starts to pick up again. This may be due to focused experimentation by some organizations that leads to a true understanding of the technology's applicability. This is where the technology enters the phase known as the slope of enlightenment. From here, the benefits of the technology are widely understood, tools mature in the market, and the use of technology stabilizes and enters the final phase of the plateau of productivity. As I had mentioned earlier, the hype cycle example diagram that we see here is normally included as part of a much detailed report which Gartner issues to its client members only and is not available in the public domain. The accompanying report explains a number of things, so let's review those here. First, the report explains the various technologies that appear on this graph and the reasoning for their positioning on this graph. This can provide enough information to organizations to decide whether they want to take the risk of trying out the technology before it becomes mainstream. The report also provides a discussion on the maturity state of technologies and other items on the hype cycle graph. For example, while certain technologies are categorized as emerging, there are others that are adolescent, mature, etc. The report also highlights the market adoption levels of each technology within the target audience. This again can provide a level of confidence to those who are considering adopting a certain technology. Each hype cycle report also signals if certain technologies are at risk of getting obsolete. Although there are no rules on when and in which phase it can happen, but most likely this happens in the first three phases. As we saw earlier, Gartner doesn't place a specific technology in the fourth phase unless there is enough data regarding its maturity and stability. So if a technology is marked as obsolete, it most likely happens before it's placed in the fourth or fifth phase. In some cases, the report also gives an indication of time frames for which certain technologies may stay in a specific phase or before those technologies are expected to become mainstream. The report also mentions the level of risk that may be associated with adopting certain technologies and depending on their position on the hype cycle. Knowing this level of risk can be useful for managers to make relevant decisions. Based on the data that one can get from this report and depending on each technology, it can become clear to one that an organization doesn't have to necessarily invest in a technology simply because it is being hyped. Nor should they ignore a technology just because it is not living up to early expectations. Now let's review some limitations that are related to this tool. The hype cycle report is usually industry agnostic. However, in reality, certain technologies may do better in some industries than others. While the tool can provide the right perspective and enough information to put us in the right direction, we should also look at, the, at this data by considering the industry to which organizations belong. For example, while the blockchain technology may be an excellent technology to trial for organizations belonging to the financial services industry, others may decide to wait longer to try its benefits. This is also evidenced by the fact that most ongoing trials r related to blockchain are within the financial services industry. So as an organization, you should formulate a technology selection methodology that takes into consideration factors specific to your industry. The hype cycle doesn't provide detailed information on vendors offering products related to various technologies. For that, organizations should consider reviewing Gartner's Magic Quadrant tool that can help organizations assess potential suppliers and understand the competition and respective positioning. 
So in summary, while adopting newer technologies and innovations provide opportunities for competitive advantage and positioning, they have certain risks. Although tools such as Gartner's Hype Cycle can provide useful insights related to new and emerging technologies, organizations should also review industry-specific implementations before making strategic technology decisions.